ask the questions and see what we do. Allow me to announce and then away we shall go. Without further ado. Let me insert the link. We hit finish announcing. It goes out on Twitter. I will sum up all of the things and then we'll be ready to rock and roll live. So, intro incoming. Good evening, welcome to tonight's Hearthstone Half Hour, or maybe slightly longer. I'm Hammy, this is Felcraft Cast. I hope you're well and good. It is Tuesday, Arena Tuesday, and for those of you, whether you be live on Twitch or on YouTube, we pick our own arena. You pick the hero, you have tweeted in, and today you have picked Mage. So we're jumping in and playing as a Mage in tonight's Arena Battle. So, what do we do? Well, as we grab Mage and pull up our first cards for people in the chat to vote on, I'll quickly run through what we do. You folks tweet in and you also chat in chat and you pick the cards that you wish for. When you grab those cards, then we uh, chat them through and we try and build a deck together around them. And then once we build a deck together, then we test it in some games in the arena to see how it gets on. If there is a drawed vote in the chat, then I take a pick. Um, and that's pretty much that. Um, I'll just go through the three arena basics. We do a bit of arena for beginners, we do talk through the cards as well, and our three-ish arena basic concepts that we go for. Number one, review your deck regularly. Pick three points in those 30 cards. It could be 8, 16, and 24. It could be 5, 12, and 18. As long as they're reasonably spaced out, taking those little breaks lets you work out um, and review your deck at a regular um, way. And by reviewing your deck in a regular way, as you go through, as you pick, you can understand where it's going, what kind of tactics you might have, how you might play it, and similar. So it's to slow you down, to stop you from charging through, and then looking back at the end and thinking, oh, actually, I've not really picked a deck that sort of plays all together. So that is rule number one. Rule number two, um, um, when you, and welcome to Tiv, join us, hope you're well, great to see you. Um, so, rule number two, as we go through, when we uh, stop at one of those points, we always review our mana curve and think, right, is, is it very heavy in the early game, is that a rush deck, is it more in the late game, do I want to make a control deck, or is it sort of evenly paced throughout? So again, when you review a deck, rule number two, review the mana curve. Um, and that will give you more clues as to how you can play. Then rule number three, when we go through, we take a look at spells against minions to see how it plays, and then we walk through each card and each point of the mana curve. So by that, I mean if you take a look at the mana section, we say, what do I do turn one? What do I do turn two? What do I do turn three? And um, and as we walk through each mana drop, then we can also work out um, how we're going to be playing our game, how we're going to be progressing the arena from therein. So there we have it. That is our three basic steps to picking an arena. Are we arena masters? No. Have we had a few good runs? Yeah. Um, and we can have some fun. And remember, we're, of course, at the mercy of folks in the chat. Um, so if you want to pick crazy stuff, then we pick crazy stuff, and it is fun and good. So first up, we are mages, of course. Mages, okay in arena, do have the strong freezing mechanics, lots of direct damage with spells. Um, got a little um, bit of buffing ability, of course, in terms of uh, those secrets that you can grab, and a really awkward <laughs> first pick. And as uh, Tiv in the chat says, I do not like any of those. Well, Tiv, I agree with you. Angry Chicken, on my bottom, Cold Light Oracle. Um, Angry Chicken, well, if you can buff it to have more than one health, then uh, you can enrage it for a plus five attack, but really that's pretty painful. The Alarmo bot, start of your turn, swap this minion with a random one in your hand. If it stays alive for one turn, then let's be honest, you might be able to swap it for a higher mana value card from your hand if you only have one card in your hand, but then the Alarmo bot might swap for something lower. When you throw it on the table, your opponent will generally just try and nuke it out of the way. So, a little bit risky. Um, last but not least, the Cold Light Oracle. Well, this is a, um, a sort of a, it's kind of a two, it's a, like it's a, a double-headed, double-headed coin type card. Um, the reason for that, it's, it can be great and constructed to allow you to force your opponent to draw or to get you further ahead. But each player drawing two cards can be quite nasty. So this can win you games. It can get you further ahead and really push you forward, but it can also lose you games. <laughs> So it should not be played. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, tell you what, Tiv, you picked Oracle. Let's go for Oracle. <laughs> um, let's. Uh, we, if if nothing else, we can show how that Oracle can be sort of a um, 
a sort of a, a two-headed hydra. It could put us in the bottom. Right, so next we have an arcane explosion. We have a Dalaran mage and an iron Bical. Okay, so we're going to say, we're going to take a look at this um, deck at say, I don't know, maybe uh, eight, let's look at nine cards in, 18 cards in, and 24 cards in. That'll be our three different breaks. So Arcane Explosion, one to all, that's good against um, rush decks and similar if you're playing, well, if you play Murlocs nowadays, you don't see so many Murloc rush decks. Things with low health, you can quickly clear the table. Um, Dalaran Mage, spell damage of plus one. We're a mage, so we'll get some use out of spell damage. Um, it's not going to really attack much before it blows up. And then last but not least, the IMB Cow. The silence is very nice. Um, one health will mean it will probably get removed. But that silence, of course, if you're a new player, remember that silence removes any card effects, um, any text on the card. So if we played an IMB Cow, we could silence this spell damaging. Arcane Explosion is the pick. I like that. There's plenty of uh, useful things uh, that I can do. And an evening to Moldy joining us. Hope you are well and good, sir. Next up, we have a Wild Pyromancer, an Abomination, and a Sludge Belcher. So that's actually quite a nice 3-drop. Um, let's go through those. The Pyromancer, um, great uh, for continuing AOE clearance. After you cast a spell, deal 1 damage to all minions. So if that spell does damage, and then your Pyromancer will do more damage, you can be doing 2 damage in a nice go. Next, we have the Abomination. Um, um, with Taunt, that's going to be a nice uh, tanking wall. Your opponents have to attack this card first. Then the Death Rattle of Dean, two tall characters. That's going to do some more damage. And then it's got 4-4 four, four as well. So it's pretty solid, a triple threat. It can sing, dance, and act in the stage terminology. Last but not least, Sludge Belcher. So uh, it's kind of Abomination, but look, one less attack, one more health. And then Taunt with a Death Rattle of summoning a 1-2 slime with Taunt. So that's a 2 for the price of one tank, a 2 for... You drop it, it's going to get... Um, destroyed and then another tank will pop up a universal vote for the Belcher. Next we have a Tauren Warrior, Lord of the Arena and a Magma Rager. Okay that's a, uh, not, not a great choice but we'll go through the three. Tauren Warrior, um, Taunt and Rage 3 attack, has to be attacked first when it takes damage it gets an additional 3 attack, will probably serve a purpose as a taunting card or as maybe an attacking card for some damage before anything else happens. Lord of the Arena, 665, you'll get a taunt in. Uh, health a little low, but pretty solid. And then Magma Rager, well, that's brilliant if it lives, but if it doesn't live, it's going to get destroyed. So 5 1. Great attack, average mana, terrible health, balances the card. Lord of the Arena is the pick. Nice one, guys. You are moving nice and snappy this evening. Elven Archer, Jungle Panther, or Mana Worm. Elven Archer. A versatile card. Uh, the battle cry of dealing one, you can use it to damage your own cards if they benefit from that. Um, think of things like the Acolyte of Pain. If it takes damage, you draw cards. So you can also use the Archer to pick off things with one health as well. A little bit of snipe damage, remove a bubble on a Divine Shielded minion, for example. So, got uses. Uh, the Jungle Panther, well, slightly higher attack, slightly lower health for the three mana cost, but it has stealth. So, stealth means no one can attack that card unless it is. Area of effect damage. And last but not least, the mana worm. Great. Whenever you cast a spell, gain one attack. But we don't have loads of spells right yet, as Molly highlights. A universal vote for the Panther. So next, we have a Nightblade, an Acolyte of Pain, and Sorcerer's Apprentice. The interesting three drop there. So the Nightblade, 5 4 4. High mana, slightly lower attack and health. The Battlecraft dealing three damage. That, that gets some solid damage in. Hurts the enemy hero, certainly. A Clyde of Pain. Whenever this minion takes damage, draw a card. That is the very minion that we were just discussing uh, last pick. So, some nice options there. Last but not least, Sorcerer's Apprentice. Your spells cost one less. 2-3-2. Uh, two, two. That's a solid uh, two-mana drop already. Um, we did not go for the Mana Worm last turn because we didn't have many spells. We didn't have... Uh, are we going to go for the Sorcerer's Apprentice? Um, it's good without the spells, but even better if we do have spells. Um, a vote for Acolyte, very sensible, that's always going to help us probably draw some cards. i take a good slurp of my British tea. Good old English breakfast tea. It's not breakfast time, but it's always tea time. <laughs> I'm thinking we're going to be grabbing an Acolyte to be moving forward. 
Acolyte it is. Next, to keep things moving, we have a Gulcher footman. We have a Venture Co Mercenary. Or oh, a Fen Creeper. Mage hero power equals acolyte. Very good point by Moldy there. I um, do remember, of course, our hero power um, lets us do one damage to a minion for two mana. Or to a hero indeed, so we can ping our own minion. We can do damage to our own acolyte and draw cards. Um, Gold Trough Footman on 1 1 2, an early game taunt, will probably take a blow from something before he gets knocked off the table. Vensico Mercenary is great for getting ahead in the mid game. Um, it makes all of your own minions cost free more, of course, as you can see. But for 5 mana, that's 7 attack and 6 health, very strong. Going to be causing problems. Last but not least, the Fen Creeper, a generally awkward uh, 5 drop tank. Um, two votes for the Creeper. So the Fen Creeper. Um, Generally, when it hits the table, just at that time of the game, doing that six damage can be quite awkward. So I like the choice of a creeper. I think you know that could uh, really slow our opponent down in the mid game. Torn warrior, a priestess of Illum, or a Grimscale oracle. So the Torn warrior we have covered. I'm not going to uh, cover him again for you. Um, the Priestess of a Loon. Um, battle cry of restoring four health to your hero for a six mana drop. Five attack, four health, four health. She's probably going to get knocked off the table, but that battle cry of four health restore is quite handy. Last but not least, the Grimscale Oracle. A fantastic card. All other Murlocs have one attack. It's a fantastic card if you're playing Murlocs. At the moment, we're not. Murlocs, of course, very popular just to be drafted by uh, you folks who tune in in general. Um, if in doubt, draw a Murloc is very often the philosophy of the Felcraft chat. Um, but who knows? What do you fancy this evening? Double Priestess, there we go. So we're almost at eight cards. Um, sorry, nine cards. So when we get to the nine card point, then we're gonna do a little review and let you guys keep picking so we can make sure that our deck is rolling along nicely. Ice Lance, Sorcerer's Apprentice, Arcane Missiles. Freeze a character with Ice Lance for one. If it's already frozen, deal four damage. A very mana efficient way of dealing some damage, um, especially when combined with Frostbolt and all of the freezing effects that a mage can have. Um, but you need those other effects, otherwise it's just a straight up freeze, of course. Sorcerer's Apprentice, we've seen once. Here's the second incarnation of it. Um, are we going to be going for it? Um, maybe. Last but not least, Arcane Missiles, the most ridiculously mana efficient damage. One mana, three um, damage with no uh, fails. But a double vote for Ice Lance. The chances of a Frostbolt showing up are fairly high. <laughs> Famous last words from Moldy. Famous last words. Hey, you know what? It may well happen. It may well happen. So um, let's see what we go with. So next up, we have a Death Lord of Vaporize or an Angry Chicken. Okay, we'll do this draft and go to ten, and then we'll uh, let the folks pick, and then we'll review the deck. So we have a Death Lord, ang Angry Chicken, again, or a Vaporize. Right, the Death Lord. Um, he is a double-edged sword. That was uh, not a two-headed coin. <laughs> A double-edged sword. Um, Taunt and Death Rattle is a great tank for three mana, but then when he dies, your opponent puts a minion from their deck into the battlefield, and that could be any minion, and it could be really early in the game and really cause us problems. <laughs> oh, tip goes for the Death Lord. Um, Vaporize, when a minion attacks your hero, destroy it. Um, good if you played in the late game when big minions are going to be trying to attack you in the face. Last but not least, Angry Chicken, whom we have discussed. We have a tie, a stone-walled stone called tie, and you know what, Tiv? I'm sorry, I'm going to be going with Vaporize because I really don't like the Death Lord in most cases. Okay. Ooh, that's a nice... Ooh. Hey, look, it's our hero. It's our king. Um, but look at what he's up against. A Water Elemental and a Scarlet Crusader. Right, we're ten cards in. So while the chat pick our next card, I'm going to do a quick deck review with our three principles. Number one, look at the mana curve. Okay, we can see we've got uh, a little bit of a spread, a few three drops at the same point. So there we go. Not really a rush deck or a control deck or a late game deck or a mid game deck at this moment in time. Um, rule number two, let's go and have a look at spells against minions. We've got three spells and then seven minions. Alright, so we've got lots of minions to throw on the table. Last but not least, let's walk through the mana curve and see what we do. Well, we've got Ice Lance at any time in the game. I can Explosion can remove damage or remove, um, not remove damage, remove low uh, health minions in the early game. Vaporize will like, destroy things. Um, Generally best played in mid to late game to get rid of big, bulky threats. Cold, like Oracle, if we have to play it, we'll draw some cards. Um, Jungle Panther, 
Stealth can do some damage. Fen Creeper and Sludge Belcher. Hey, look at those two. I think that's a nice area to look at. That really gives us a solid mid-game block. We can slow up our opponent. We can take board control with those. I think that will be quite a focal point for us. So we can focus earlier or later from that. And then Lord of the Arena again. We've got a very good set of tanks in the mid-game. Three taunts there. Look, all of them whom which are very strong in their own way. Then Priest of Obaloon gives us a health top up. So we've got a solid Quora deck there that we can build from in whatever direction we like. Back to the draw and... Scarlet Crusader with the bubble wit can trade and then it will perish. Acidic Swamp Ooze, the hero of this stream, King Ooze himself, removes that weapon. Brilliant against weapon decks. Generally does a very mana efficient trade and 2 3 2. He is excellent. But the pick you have gone for is the Water Elemental, a brilliant basic 4 drop and 3 6. Freeze any character by this minion that stays on the table for so long and really irritates people as it goes. So a really nice choice by you all. Even if we did ignore our hero, Wolf Rider, Dark Iron Dwarf, or Frost Nova. There's the other freeze. So Wolf Rider, for a 3 drop, you throw it down, it charges, it does damage, it disappears into the night. That is what it is. 3 damage. Dark Iron Dwarf, a very solid card, good stats, and then also gives the minion to attack this turn. That means that you can make more effective trades. If I want to try and swap something on the table, then I can do it uh, generally for a bit less mana. Last but not least, Frost Nova, freeze all minions. Well, this is brilliant in many situations. If your opponent's got a full table of minions hitting in your face, then Frost Nova pauses them all in their tracks and lets you regroup for one turn. Remember that a freeze removes the next attack of that minion or hero. That is how that works. Of course, this is just on minions. Mm, well, the choice is between Frost Nova and Did. Dark Iron Dwarf. Jules, take your picks. Wolf Rider has been ignored. There is a various uh, vacillating, various weave, wavering and pondering. There's a uh, noble folks of chat. Make your decision. If you continue going on, then I will probably start having a little bit of a chat about, oh, I don't know, let's say Alien Isolation, what's been going on this week. Let's see if people folk. Dwarf! Nova, I think, or Dwarf, or Dwarf. I think it's going to be Dwarf. Let's go with Dwarf. I like the choice of Dwarf. And we have a next of an Amani, Berserker, a Polymorph, ooh, or Fireball. So the Amani Berserker, enrage it for a plus three from two three to five two, a strong drop before its damage, and we can always damage it ourselves. So a good early game pressure. Poly, the ultimate mage crowd control, transform any minion into a one run sheep. Big eight, nine, ten mana drop. Sheep it. All your problems go away temporarily. Then Fireball, of course, the mage's basic amazing nuke. Four mana, six damage. Very, very nice. Everyone's gone for poly. Crowd control being the order of the day here on Arena Tuesday. Oh, and another nice three pick, actually. Um, I'm actually just kind of liking the fact that there's a water elemental in here. We have covered the Tauren Moira, we have covered the water elemental already, and the Argent Squire. Divine Shield 1 1 1. That will probably trade instant choosing of Ellie. Nice and chat moving on quickly in unison. Ooh, and now it's getting real. It's getting real, real serious. Um, and really nice drops and really nice three picks coming up. Some hard decisions for you. Frostnova, Poly, and Fireball. We've covered all of these three cards already, and all of them. Um, are a very, very nice set of things to have. Um, we're almost at sort of 15 decisions, decisions, says Tim, and I could not agree more. Uh, there's a real challenge to be had there. What is going to be best? Oh, so many options. Um, remember that our next deck review point we said was going to be, broadly speaking, 18 or 19 cards, so we can have a full-on review then and see what we're going to be at to Ooh, Fireball. Okay, two votes for Fireball. You guys are going for Nukes. Next, we're going to go for Guru Pashi Berserker, another Polymorph, and a Fairy Dragon. So, two new cards here. The Guru Pashi Berserker, whenever the minion takes damage, gain three. Now, with a Mage Power, we can do damage to our minion. So, we can make him five, seven, eight, uh, six, uh, sorry, five, six, eight, five, <laughs> and similar things. Um, and then a fairy dragon can't be targeted by spells or by the hero powers. So a really solid early game basic. I'm actually going to, um, cause we're, ooh, are we on a split? Ooh, okay, Moldy is making up his mind. Yep, a dragon. He's going to even out the mana curve. Very nice. So the poly could have been another strong choice. Next we have an Argent Squire. 
Mystic Swamp Ooze and a Duplicate. Duplicate is a lovely little secret. So we've covered the other two. We're going to cover Duplicate now. Duplicate is new in Curse of Naxxramas. And when a friendly minion dies, put two copies of it into your hand. So if you can engineer it that your opponent kills one of your strong, minion, strong minions, then you get two of it back in your hand. And I've, I've used this to great effect with the Water Elemental in the ladder. Um, your opponent really tries to kill your Water Elemental, but you have a Duplicate down, and you just get two Water Elementals back in your hand to throw back down again. So whether you fancy an Argent Squire, an Acidic Swamp Ooze, or a Duplicate, um, it is up to you. Two votes for Duplicate. Is Duplicate good? I want to see. Um, let's see if we can show you Duplicate in action. So next we have a uh, Chill Wind Yeti, a Flame Strike, and a Lepanoma. And that is three new cards. So let's um, go through all of those and take our picks. Um, the Chill Wind Yeti, brilliant basic for a four drop. It's just going to hit the table and be awkward before it goes. Flame Strike, excellent mage, uh, late game crowd control can just strafe everything off your opponent's side of the table. In arena, it can sometimes be hard to stay alive to seven mana, because generally decks tend to be a little bit earlier game, but not necessarily uh, one to be ignored. Last but not least, the Lepanome, well, it will give us a bit of early game pressure, we can throw it in, it'll do some damage, it'll be irritating, it will certainly get a couple of damage on the enemy hero, or a minion, unless silenced. So up to you. Um, we're almost at deck review points, so that will help us in our thinking. I'm just going to quickly um, share our stream. So what's it going to be? What's it going to be, folks? What is it going to be? Ooh, okay, dokey. Ooh, just putting the links in. I do share on Liquid Hearth. If you guys are on Liquid Hearth, by the way, I would love you to sort of a. Uh, um, if you fancy commenting or bumping the thread every now and then when we're live, then that'd be awesome. Okie dokie. Flame Strike always need one way out, so Flame Strike has been the pick. Right. Oh, Flame Strike again. A mirror image, which is also very awkward. And an unstable ghoul, that's actually a really awkward three pick. Um, so, uh, flame strike we've already covered. Mirror image for one mana, you can have two early game tanks. Very, very nice way of walling yourself up, getting yourself protected. And then the unstable ghoul, the taunt of death rattle of dealing one to all minions, that will deal damage to your own minions as well. So, with things like the acolyte of pain, it actually combos rather nicely. Um, vote for mirror image, helping with early game delay and similar. Cool, so what's it going to be? Do you want some more early game tankage? Mirror image for two. Let's go. Right, ooh, nice. Okay, so I'm going to do a deck review, but then next we have a Kirin Tormage, an Abomination, and a Murloc Tide Caller. So the Kirin Tormage, um, we'll review these in a set, we're just going to review our deck. Right, so we're 19 cards in. Let's take a look at that mana curve. We can see a very strong three and four mana presence, swinging a bit towards more of an early to mid game deck at this point, just looking at that mana curve. More cards in the early to mid game for us to play. Let's take a look at spells against minions. Step number two, well, one, two, three spells, four, five spells, six, seven spells, eight spells, um, to uh, 11 minions. This is feeling more like a mage deck. Of course you have spells in a mage deck. And then let's walk through the mana curve as step three and see how that's going to work for us. Well, Ice Lands can drop whenever. Uh, a mirror image will give us protection in the early game with tanks. Arcane Explosion will help us clear. Fairy Dragon will help us put a little bit of pressure on minion-wise in the early game. Duplicate and Vaporize, two secrets. Vaporize, drop in the late to mid-game to get rid of big nasty minions. Duplicate, ideally played when we have strong minions on the table that we want to get some more of. Um, Acolyte of Pain for card draw. Cold Light Oracle if we have to draw some cards. Jungle Panther for some sniping. Fireball for nuking. Polymorph for control. Dark Undle for twades. Two Water Elementals are a really solid mid-game combo that will help us uh, pressure forward. Then our Holy Trinity of mid-game tanks, which will be very strong. Creeper, Belcher, and Lord of the Arena. That's a real solid spine to our deck. 
leverages us well into the mid game, might even let us finish it off. A Lunar will heal us and then Flame Strike if we get to that stage and are in trouble to keep our opponent's table under control. Okay, so we have but 11 cards left to go. Let us jump on in and grab those. So, um, having reviewed the mana curve, having looked at spells against minions, having looked at how the deck plays, I'd say that at the moment we're looking at an early to mid game deck. We're going to try and finish the game in the mid game. I think um, in the early game we'll probably try and look to keep the table under control just trade minions as best we can we don't have huge minion presence early game i just think that's worth flagging um, as we bridge into the mid game we've got jungle panther dark iron dwarf all of these water elementals and a really solid core so we're slightly lacking in early game minions we could probably do with either more spells to control in the early game or minions to trade with i would say so that's just a flag for you we grab control in the mid game with these very strong tanks and water elementals and then hopefully we finish mid to late game so i'd say this is a mid game ish tempo ish deck let's try and control in the early game by whatever means necessary and win in the mid game okay so final 11 cards kirin tormage um battle Battle Cry, the next secret you play costs zero. Um, three, four, three, so strong. Um, if you play turn, if you're playing second and get a coin, you can drop that turn two, and then that minion turn two combined with a free secret, very strong indeed. So you often see Kirin Tor Mage being played nowadays in sort of secrets mage. Abomination, we've already covered. Taunt, Death Rattle, deal two to or um, a nice wall, but we've got a lot of walls. And then the Murloc Tide Quarter, which is great if you have Murlocs. The Kirin Tor Mage gets the vote, so let's grab it. Next, the Murloc Raider, the Frost Nova, and the Earthen Ring Farseer. Murloc Raider, 1 2 1. It goes in, it does damage, it dies. That is the Murloc Raider. Not really loads more we can say. And a welcome to Zano. Um, next, we have a Frost Nova, freezing all of those enemy minions again, if we want to. We could still do it with our Ice Lance. Remember that Ice Lance so, so long ago? We said Frostbolt! Frostbolt, we said it will definitely turn up. We said we'll see. We don't have that many cards to go. Earthen Ring Farseer. A battle cry of restoring three health. Three, three, three. Will trade. Will do some damage, I feel. So, and it's all well and good. What is it going to be? What do you fancy? Let us know we are so close, and then we can get a couple of games in also. Uh, 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 oh. Nova, 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 far on over, Nova it is going to be. And next we have the Dancing Swords, the Ventrico Mercenary or Arcane Intellect. Righty then. Dancing Swords, with a death rattle, your opponent draws a card. Um, strong for its mana cost, but you give a card draw. Swings and roundabouts. Venture Mercenary, your minions cost three more. Um, we can really grab control in the mid game with that. However, 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 however. Um, do, 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 then you were going to have to pay three more for your minions. As a result, that's not going to be too fun. Unless it dies, of course. Last but not least, Arcane Inflet. We draw two cards. Um, for three mana, two card draw. More card draw is good. Might help us in the early game accelerate into the middle late game. Um, so up to you. We've got votes for Venture Co. Mercenary. What's it going to be? What you gonna do, what you gonna do when they come for you? Okay, so bearing in mind that we want to grab control in the early game and sort of solidify the mid game. I like the thought of venture here, I also like the thought of card draw. Um, the vote has gone with Venture, so I'm going to go with Venture. Uh, let's see if that really grabs us in. Next, we're going to grab a Bluegill Warrior, a Spellbreaker, or a Frost Wolf Grant. Oh, Moldy comes in late, just a little too late. Um, me ninjaing on and keeping us moving. I do apologise, Moldy. Okay, Bluegill Warrior charges, does damage, and then dies. The Spellbreaker will give us a nice silence with a 4 3. And the Frost Wolf Grunt is just a really, really sort of Solid. Um, oh, everyone for Spellbreaker. Rocking on. Next, we have an Iron Bee Cow, an Arcane Missiles, 
or mirror image. We've had all three of these before, but for those who have just joined, I'd be cattle. Silences will help us in the early game. Arcane Missiles, mana efficient damage will also help us in the early game if we grab it. Mirror image gives us yet more annoying 0-2 tanks. Protecting us in the early to mid game, allowing us to probably bridge into those not strong mid game minions that we have. Ooh, Doritos. Ooh, multiple votes for the, the owl. A owl. Next, Venture Co. Merkinari, a Fen Creeper, or a Merlock Tidehunter. So of those threes, we've already got one Venture Cone Mercenary due to me ninjaing in at the request of Tiv. Uh, Fen Creeper, we've got one, two, could be good. We've got a fair few tanks at five, five and six, but another one might be interesting. And then the Merlock Tidehunter, a very strong two for one, certainly. Um, they will probably die, but they will hopefully trade some uh, minions in the early game or perhaps do a bit of hero damage. So looking at our mana curve with six odd cards to go, we've certainly got a lot at three and four. We just need to make sure that we can bridge into that point, I feel. I do excuse me why I, excuse me why I consume this Dorito. Ooh, Fen, a couple of Fen Creepers. Okay. People quite fancying that tanking, tankage. Next up, Mirror Image, Unstable Ghoul or Cone of Cold. So Mirror Image we have, do you want more? An unstable Ghoul, Taunt, Death Rattle, deal one to all, a nice slowing card in the early game, or the Cone of Cold. Freezing a minion, and the minions next to it, and dealing one damage. Um, could trigger off our right slants, could slow down our opponent, could perhaps do something nasty to a big, ugly um, rush decks. The Murlocs would squeal and flee from a Cone of Cold indeed. Okay, votes for the ghoul, and the ghoul is the ghoul. Next we have a polymorph, a bowl of fist ogre, or a priestess of Illu. So we've had a polymorph, the bowl of fist ogre will give us a bit of six mana punching power, do some stuff there. Um, and the priestess of Illu would give us another healing option if we wanted to top ourselves up and uh, keep on rolling into the late game. We're not going to be attacking with a hero, of course, because we don't have a weapon unless something really funky goes on. I'm trying to think of a game state where a mage could get a weapon. We need to be able to steal cards somehow. Which I'm not sure if a mage can do. Hmm, Boulder, Ogre or Polly. A couple of votes for the Boga. Boga? <laughs> Boulder, Ogre. <laughs> any more for any more. Otherwise, we shall roll forward. I'm thinking that this is a Boulder Fist Ogre vote, personally. I think we got two. Have we got two polys or just the one? Just the one at this point in time. Okay. The Boulder gets it, so we keep moving. Oh. Duplicate. A second duplicate. A Boulder Fist Ogre or Frostwolf Warlord. Okay, okay. Duplicate, we have one of them, two. That could go very nicely with several of our big, ugly minions. The Boulder for Stoker, you've just grabbed one of. Do you want another one to really solidify that sort of six mana point? Well, I think that we have a reasonable amount of finishes if you take a look at our latter end of the deck. Last but not least, Frostwolf for Warlord. One one for each other friendly minion on the battlefield. If we have a lot of minions down, that could become a big, ugly finisher, letting us swing in and do a lot of damage. Votes going in for duplicates. Well played duplicates could well win us this game. Don't forget we've got the um, Kirin Torn Mage as well for a little bit of ugliness if we want to uh, cause some trouble. Mm. 
I think that's a duplicate vote. I'm going to give Zono some time. I promise that's my last Dorito. <laughs> Doritos and Mountain Dew, man. Okay, duplicate it is. And next we have Stormwind Knigit, Monty Python style, a silver hand Knigit, or an Elven Archer. So the Stormwind Knight will charge in, not for much damage, but for his low mana drop, he'll run in a few times before he dies. Silver hand Knight, battle cry of summoning a 2 2 squire, a 2 for 1 that will certainly give you another minion for some nice mid game table control. Good pressure card. And last but not least, the Elven Archer, which will ping something for one, perhaps charge in for something. Ooh, an SHK. In comes the Sirius Sabota. Yep, Silver Hand, Silver Hand. Most people like the Silver Hand for its general chunky table presence at 4 4, and then that bonus 2 2, who is quite hard to remove. Next, we have a Crazed Alchemist, a Cold Light Oracle. What a young priestess. I've spelt crazed ale alechemist. Someone who likes beer, who also likes doing sewing. Or crazed alchemist. Um, swap the health and attack of a minion. For science! At least there's a card that says for science now, the mad scientist. But uh, crazed alchemist is still a very, is the science card. Um, swapping health and attack. Well, we could turn a fen creeper from a 3-6 into a 6-3. We could... Um, do similar with a water elemental and all sorts of other things. We could have some fun with that. Admittedly, um, that works best with very low health, very uh, low attack, high health cards because then it makes them insta pain. The Cold Light Oracle, each player drawing two. We drew that for um, because it wasn't a great pick earlier in. Oh, everyone has gone for science, that makes it easy. No young priestess necessary. Right, let's try and read our deck. So you can see that number one, rule number one from looking at our mono curve, we can see that we're very much an early to mid game deck. Really not too much going on at the end here. A huge chunk of cards from two mana to five mana in particular. So many in fact and so much variety that we can't even get the whole deck list in. Let's then go and have a look at our spells against minions. One, two, three, ooh, four, five, six, seven, and then let's pop down to eight, nine. And then pause at 10 with flame strike. So 10 spells, 20 minions. We're going to be doing a lot with minions, trying to keep the table under control with those. And then let's run through the deck. Well, in the early game, we've got some minions to try and keep the table under control. Mirror Image will still, Lance can freeze and do damage late game. Arcane will take out rushes. Science can be dropped at any point to swap minions' health or just for some pressure. Very Dragon early game pressure. Silence, not science at any time. A tank in the ghoul to solidify the early game. Duplicates can be dropped whenever, but ideally to get our big minions cloned and back in the battle. Frost Novas uh, for a quick freeze can combo with Ice Lance. Vaporize for the mid to late game to get rid of big minion threats. Acolyte of Pain for card draw. Cold Light for emergency card draw, probably don't want to play it. Jungle Panther for attack in a stealthy way. Kieran Tor for dropping secrets. Fireball DPS, Polymorph Control, Upwards Trades and Table Presence in the Dark Iron Dwarf. So another Silence in the Spellbreaker, and then our really solid core. So we, if we've used all that in the early game to get to turns 4 and 5, then we've got two strong tanks, two very good, annoying, tanky attacking minions with Freeze, a 2 for 1, another strong tank, another mid-game piece of control, and then Ogre Arena. A loon. So if you note that, we only have one card above 7 mana, and that is Flame Strike. So we are trying to get the table under control with minions and spells in the early to mid game, and then we just need to be hitting our opponent in the face before it gets to a late game. So we have to lock this game up as soon as possible. It's not a rush, but we need to have control by the mid game with that kind of deck list. So, step one done. Let's try it out. In a couple of games. So as we jump in, let us share the news, what's been going on. Well, Alien Isolation was out today. Um, if you're in the US, I think a few people uh, got some early copies of the game over the last day or two. So it's been doing the rounds on YouTube. Um, we shared a couple of commentary loose games. It was a, uh, a quiet time 
that we had to stream. So, mm, okay. Right, I'm actually going to trade those and try and grab some earlier game cards. That's a risk keeping both. And that risk has not paid off. And we really need some more early game cards. And we're playing a fellow major. Who knows what they're going to be doing. Alien Isolation out. Um, had to work an event last night. Um, did have the privilege of watching Alien on the big screen, which was absolutely amazing. Um, but yes, so a fun game. Um, if you like horror games, worth a go. If you like Alien, worth a go. Um, I would definitely advise that if at some point you get the opportunity to try it out, do try it out. Um, will not be everyone's cup of tea. Um, I'm not a massive horror game fan, and I um, get very, very jumpy <laughs> at scary games. So uh, I will have to do something like that on the stream one time for fun. Okay, right, I can coin out a water elemental next go, so I'm just going to pop this off the table. So yeah, aliens. I do like my sci-fi, so I, I do like uh, uh, the thought of a good alien game. And um, Alien Isolation genuinely is a good alien game. Whether it's your kind of game is is a another cup of tea. So maybe slightly manner efficient, inefficient move. But I'm going to ping that off. I just don't know what this secret is. Oh, down goes a water elemental. We've got all kinds of troubles and pain going on. I'm actually just going to toss down a vaporize, call his bluff, because that will really help me. I don't really want that on the deck. Shout from Zano. Have you ever taken an arena deck and used it in play mode? Um, we can. No, I haven't, but we should try it with this one. Uh, play mode is one thing. I mean, we can go give it a game casual. Ladder, this could. I don't know. It could do okay. I'd probably have gone for things like the Arcane Intellect and a little bit more card draw if we were going to be throwing it into a ladder context. Uh, so, Mage Secret, what could that be? Well, let's have a think about how we could play around it. Vaporize, we'd have to attack to find out what it is. We've not played a minion, it could be a mirror entity. There is the Vaporize. And I'm happy for that because that gets rid of what was quite a nasty threat. Ideally, I would throw down a small minion to uh, um, avoid the mirror entity. Otherwise, I'm going to cause myself problems. Let's see. Instead, I'm going to throw down a big one. It's not a mirror entity. It is a mirror entity. Oh, there you go. Hoisted by my own petard. Um, but of course, note that he doesn't get the effect of summoning the extra squire. So, I was thinking, obviously, just then, you saw me thinking about throwing down a, th a small minion. If I'd thrown down the crazed alchemist, that would have been the perfect thing. He would have just got one of those. I've given him quite a benefit for free. Um, well, not free, for the cost of the secret. So now, with his little cards, Stampeding Kodo removes my... Could have always silenced the loot hoarder, says Tiv. Yeah, it's a very good plan. Mm, okay, so what can we do for six? The Venture Co. Merc will give us options. But what I'd probably rather do is say, So, I hear you like mudkips. I don't know why the water elemental kind of reminds me of a mudkip. Maybe because it's been a long day. <laughs> okay, we're behind on health. That Stampeding Kodo is quite an awkward amount of health. It's not going to go down um, quick and easy. There we go. It's going for the trade with 7 mana. I'm sure there's something that can remove that Frosty Elemental. Mm -hmm. And in the Storm and Night, we found the card that will do the job. And a Fire Blast as well. well on the bright side, he spent a lot of minion, uh, minion mana and effort to try and remove all of that. So I can find, try and find some way of capitalising. Now those, remember, are frozen for their next attack. It means that they're not going to be able to attack next turn. So I can take this time to set my table up um, to perhaps trade these away. I think the Water Elemental is a solid option one. And then other things I could do. The Acolyte of Pain would let me tip this and then mana to remove that next turn also. So I'm actually going to be quite happy for dropping. Or the alternative would be perhaps something like, mm, there's no point owling could be fireballing. I'm going to just get table position with the minions. That will feel good. End of turn. It's 
Dark Scale Healer goes down and ruins my party. Uh, where is Flame Strike when you want it? Because that would be good. Suddenly, our opponent's table is looking nasty, nasty, nasty. Right, there's a tank there that will certainly give us some protection. Venture Coma, we're not going to do huge amounts. Silencing this will at least mean it's not going to come back like the Terminator. Um, so that might well be a benefit. It would be nice to get some of these off the table. I'm actually just going to use up my nuke. We'll get one of those big ugly minions off the deck. Um, in terms of a second um, thing, well, I can... Mm -mm 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 -mm. I could do some weird science. Weird science. There's an example of science in action, letting me do the removal. And then let's finally grab another card. And I'll be drawn into a Fen Creeper so we can throw out a nice big taunt next turn as well. So I've managed to get a bit of. Oh, nice. Okay, that's got a charge. One ping. That can remove this if he wants. He has gone for the removal of my Ice Elemental. Water Elemental, pardon. And he's going to ping off finally to uh, ensure that I can't draw any more cards or do more damage. Done. There we go. Now this is nasty. I'd quite like to get rid of that Stormwind Champ, but I have nothing to do it with at this point in time. So, other options. Kowalski, give me options. Well, the Fen Creeper is options. That will force a trade here. And the Unstable Ghoul is another option, which will also, if he does decide to destroy it, remove this. Finally, I'm going to remove that. And then last but not least, I'm going to... Mm, just to stop it from getting healed, I'm going to ping that off the table too. Um, I could have removed one from this. Then if he'd attack this, if he'd remove that somehow, three, four, one damage from that five, equal one more damage from that six. So if he did use his minion to attack somehow or in some combo, off chance of me passively removing that Stormwind Champ. Down goes the tiger and another secret. Great. I've not been able to use my duplicate and I've lost two frost elementals also, remember. Bing! Down goes a ball of fist. I could just fin creeper it again for maximum irritation. And then of course maybe the venture came mercenary will let me start doing some more removals. Oh, am I gonna go for some of that? Oh, a mirror entity. Two mirror entities. That is really frustrating. Oof. Uh, ways to play around that. Play cheap minions again. So uh, our opponent's done well by drafting these mirror entities. At least we've sucked up his poly, but that's not going to stop him bringing some wrecking with all of his minions up. Unless I get my flame strike, this is going to be a big ass to recover from. Oh, more secrets. How many secrets has this guy drafted? Oh, and a duplicate comes when it's just not going to do anything of consequence. Um, okay, well, no tanks. Could get desperate and draw cards. It's probably adding fuel to the fire. I'm going to restore four. I very much doubt he's going to um, do anything with that. But we'll throw down a duplicate on the off chance that he decides to try and remove this. Emergency draw! <laughs> Yells Tiv. Yeah, I think Cold Like Oracle could well have been an option. Um, I'm hoping that he, he, if he does take the bait and decides to kill that uh, um, Priestess of Elune, then I can sort of try some kind of crazy healing gimmick. Really, it will only keep me in the game for like another turn, possibly. Mostly. Mostly keep me in the game. I'll put it on your tab. Oh, and this is all looking ugly. And now, very sensibly, just rushing straight in. Yeah, there's not going to be much way I'm going to get around that. Ah, uh, Frost Nova. Buying some time. 
Okay, so you said you wanted to see the YOLO, so let's have a gold light oracle and see what we can grab. Really should have played the oracle first. Spellbreaker, silencing. How does that need to benefit me? Um, it removes the taunt for one. Mm -mm. If I get this stat, it's going to be able to remove something next turn. Oh, we might be able to trade everything off. Oh, we haven't been able to draw a flame strike. Duplicate. Which minion was it? Oh, two processes of elite. Okay, it did it in order. So that's interesting. It's whatever gets destroyed first that gets the benefit of the duplicate left to right. Worth knowing. Um, I can heal up slightly. Uh, Kowalski give me options like the penguins of Madagascar. I'm on nine, there's 14 there. He's not been scratched. I can throw down another priestess. But I'm guessing that we've got a pyroblast. No, oh, pyro. Ouch. Okay, let's play another. So, what really caused us problems there? The answer in one fail swoop is the nasty card that was Mirror Entity. We did not really play around Mirror Entity. So it's kind of hard because that could have been one of a bunch of secrets. But if we take a look at Mage Secrets, um, playing a minion, casting a spell, attacking the enemy hero, um, casting a spell on a minion, or, or killing a minion. So there's so many different triggers. But okay, the one that you're probably going to trigger first is either playing a spell or playing a minion. Okay, we're playing a Warlock. Let's uh, make this back right. We've got Frost Nova, we've got Fairy Dragon. I'm going to bin the Frost Nova. Flame Strike goes back. I hope I'm not playing a Zoo, but to be honest, if it is a Zoo, Flame Strike will be a bit too late. Fairy Dragon and Mirror Image give me a nice early game. Liking that, and with Duplicate, possibly we can get back some nice tanks and things too. So I'm just going to go straight up and say, hey, I hear you like tanks. We've been watching the uh, Penguins cartoon series from the uh, um, from Madagascar. They have their own TV series, and it's on Amazon Instant Video. So if you have Prime or similar in your household, then you too can enjoy the joys of Amazon Instant Vids. And I can get really annoying. Duplicate goes down, and if he decides to kill one of those, then I get two of them for free. <laughs> and can throw down a fairy dragon next go. Ooh, questing adventurer, that's not good. I'd like to kill that. There we go. Zing. Duplication. Cool. Lots of freeness. Um, two zero to zero. Uh, two, two, two zero to zero, zero. Zero one, zero one, one. Zero, zero, one, one. Family Guy references got all. I'm not going to let him, so I'm actually just going to freeze that straight up. If he does buff it up, I can try to take it out and let's go with my fairy dragon. Uh, the Penguins of Madagascar series is uh, loads of fun. I recommend it. So if someone's got Prime in your house, you can give Amazon Instant Video a go for free. Welcome home, timers. It's great to have you with us. Hope you're good, all play cards, and then that questing adventure is just getting buffed and buffed and buffed and buffed. Oh, a little nuke there, a little demon fire to deal three, because we've got the spell damage down from the kobold, nice play. Now that questing adventure is going to get big and bad and ugly until I find a way of taking it out. Um, I do have the option to take it out, so that shall be done um, as kingdom come. Let's not get too religious about this. Now the crazed alchemist, I'm um, swapping the attack of a health and a minion. Hey, why not? Let's do it on this. Oh, that was a silly play. Um, because, of course, adjacent minions just have one attack. So I've just given him a one buff for no particular reason. I should have done it on the direwolf. Has that one attack regardless? Buffed up goes the direwolf. Trades can be made. That flame strike. We need that flame strike in our lives. 
Why did I mulligan it away? Well, happily we've got a Fen Creeper to slow affairs down with. A massive fail play. So, learning of that, if you have a buffing minion on the table, it's going to buff that minion. The minion has one attack regardless. If you swap them, it will still be buffed up to one attack. Oh, Shadow Bolt. Five damage. This arena is looking painful. At least one of them was traded away, but there's still seven on the table and buffed up more. So, where is the Flame Strike? We saw three flame strikes and I think we only drafted one. Arcane Explosion is not going to save us. Um, but it will let us... Yeah, we can remove a couple. And for that reason I think we should do so. Drop it to five. Ah cool home timers. How you find it? Okay, alrighty, Frost Nova, we can um, get the table all sort of frozen up a nice, but we're in danger here. So if we feed this guy cards, then we're going to be in trouble. However, if we do nothing, we're also going to be in trouble. Not a great position to be in. Um, I'm going to cold light and then freeze. Home Timers asks, what should I do with my Gold King Muckler? Um, so home timers, I would say I think he disenchants into. I would probably disenchant him. Um, now, what I would do before you disenchant him, um, just double check the disenchant value because I believe his disenchant value will be that of one normal legendary. Um, so if you get one normal legendary, that can give you your first legendary or maybe a whole bunch of rare cards. Um, good advice Sano as well, whether you plan on using him. Now, in most decks, honestly, home timers, you're not going to use a Muckler. Now, Muckler has a good use, but in a couple of decks, a couple of decks, and there are other legendaries that you can use in a lot more decks, for example. Um, so, with that gold Muckler, you can either have enough dust to like make a bunch of rares, or maybe like stack up a... You could almost make get like four or five rare cards or something for a more solid... Um, starting deck if you're in if you're just starting out um, so yeah I don't think really you're gonna need him so just double check if he, if he gives you something like one thousand uh, five hundred dust or something chant value is one thousand dust or so then he pretty much gives you a another legendary and you can get more versatile legendaries or one for your first deck. Yeah, I think it, you're right, Zano. I think it is 1600. Um, right. While I've not been looking, <laughs> we've just lost the game. Uh, I don't have a, a freeze or anything. I don't. I don't have an answer to this. He's got 11, uh, 14, um, 17. Um, um, yeah, we've lost this. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna lose this honourably by throwing down a silver hand knight. I could have acolyte. I could have uh, zapped my own acolyte. Oh, uh, get rid of one of those there, uh, and then we're gonna get seven fourteen. Yada yada yada. Okay, so this arena run has really not gone too well. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Flame strike where? <laughs> Agreed, Tiff. Okie dokie. So, um, just finishing off dealing with that question in the chat for you, um, home timers. It's a really good one. Like, you, you get a sort of a. In fact, let's just go cover it for you. Have I got a golden, golden, golden? I've got a golden legendary. Show any golden cards? Mm -mm -mm -mm. I don't have, I think the only golden legendary I have is um, ETC and he's not dissable. The ETC. 
as you can see. Okay, but yeah, I think the disk value of, yeah, do, 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 plus 400, minus 1600. So, the answer was sort of, should I disk my Gold King Merkel? I think you should probably should. Um, and I would probably think about what kind of deck you want to play and then uh, take a little look and see what you can grab. So if you were looking at Undertaker Priest, um, and I think this is a nice one, let's just quickly f finish off our episode tonight. I'm just going to pull up the Undertaker Priest and we can take a look at that deck list. Oh, in fact, look, we're in uh, my construct mode so I can take a look anyway. Let's go into my collection and then go into... This is an Undertaker Priest, I think. There we go. There's, uh, I think that should be the same version. There we go. So you can see that that version is kind of packing, packing a fair few legendaries. Um, but if we have a look, Circle of Healing Res, Powered Shields, not sure, Clerics. Okay, you do have the odd uh, few rares here. Um, you can play a reasonable Undertaker, I'd say, without getting too stuck into epics and things like that. Rivendare, of course, you grab just from playing um, uh, through Naxxramas. Um, some of these other cards are also Naxxramas cards too. Uh, Zombie Chow and Undertake from that, for example, you can get from playing Nax. Um, so, but yeah, th there is quite a few rares in this deck, I would be honest with you. Um, but you could probably maybe take a look at a slightly different deck home timers. But um, think of solid legendaries. So if I just show you some other legendaries, and we'll close out on this, that you could grab. Well, what else could you grab? Let's um, have a look at legendary... Legend Ari. Oh, I can't spell legendary. Legend Ari. There we go. So, for starters, um, home timers, you could um, have a think. Whatever deck you're going to play, there are always some legendaries that are quite good. So you know, don't don't craft your first legendary until you've had a think about what kind of deck you want to play. And have a look at your other cards too. So like things like Ragnaros, generally always quite handy. He will always be a finisher. Um, legendaries like Lira is not as quite as good as he used to be. Um, things like Ken also quite solid. Sylvanas can also be quite solid. Um, as you can see, lots of holes in my collection. And don't forget your class legendary. So if you're thinking, oh, I want to play Priest, I wouldn't really recommend that you grab Velen as the class legendary. He's good, but he's, again, not going to be overtly used by you, whereas some other heroes would always use their legendary. So, um, like, Paladins use Tyrion a lot. He's a very, very good finishing card. Um, rogues don't sometimes use Van Cleef. Um, most shamans, uh, there are a lot of shaman decks that revolve around Alakir, so he's quite good. Uh, Jaraxxus, 50-50. Warriors, a lot of uh, warriors use Gromash. So, that is the sort of legendary thoughts. I would diss a King Mukla, and the reason for dissing Mukla is that he's only used in a couple of decks, and they're quite situational. So, if you've got a gold one of him, and he gives you 1600 dust, that will let you craft any of these any of these that you fancy um, and just tie it to the kind of deck you fancy really um, but there are always some generally useful legendaries and I'll say like you know rag is always one of them and then some of the class legendaries also so that is it for tonight's episode um, thank you so much for tuning in um, sorry that I didn't stream last night as I said we were very very busy um, out at work and about but we are going to do new player monday with our deck build down and similar we might try and sneak that in at lunchtime later this week or we may well do it let's say thursday night and switch in night um, so thanks for tuning in um, if you've joined us for the first time do come and take a little look at um, youtube.com forward slash fellcraftcast if you're watching live we have over 100 half scene half hour episodes lots of deck guides and similar there lots of resources if you're watching on youtube come to twitch.tv forward slash fellcraftcast we've done on this live monday through friday times are there and we'll always tweet on at fellcraftcast before we're going to go live last but not least the website is fellcraft.org and there you can find all sorts of things including um, things that don't live so well um, in a video so links a few news articles a few bits and bobs and similar fun too so thank you for tuning in. Tomorrow uh, we're going to be back. It's Wednesday, so we're going to be doing Ladder Wednesday, taking a look at laddering decks, both what we're playing and what's going on on the ladder as we start yet another Hearthstone season and try and maybe achieve one day that elusive legend like the cartoon uh, villains that we are trying to take over the world. Maybe we'll do it one day, but that day 
who knows if it will ever come. Think of Pinky in the Brain if you're an Animaniacs fan. Thank you for tuning in. I'll just jump into the chat and say hello, and great